Hey, I want to thank you for listening to today's podcast. I'm not sure how you found us, but I want to let you know that we have made it as easy as possible for you to find, follow, and share this podcast with as many people as possible. All you have to do is type in Community Solutions, and we're in the Apple iTunes Store, the Google Play Store, we're on Spotify, and uh, as usual, you can find it out on YouTube or by going directly to podbabble.com, a great podcast network that we're part of. So go out there and, uh, and, and go nuts, because the more that you share this information, the greater opportunity that you have to change your community. So thank you again for listening. Now let's get back to the show. way you're dead in his sights big gun this is the community solutions podcast jason bradley andrew richter here for another fabulous episode deep in the bowels of st louis park they get more fabulous every single week is, is that a word? I, I think so. I, yes. I, I talked to my nephew today who's seven, or almost yes. seven, and he told me that in his baseball game or his t-ball game, he grabbed the ball twice, and twice he throwed somebody out. Well, that's good. <clears throat> so he's got the Jesse Ventura grammar uh, down <laughs> pat. <laughs> he's been watching the AWA. Yeah. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been good. Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, who is uh, that? Who is that song? ACDC. Big oh, gun. I know them. Yeah. That's electricity, right? ACDC. Right, right. That's exactly yeah, what I'm uh, talking about. Yeah, but it's, is that how they got their name? I would assume so, yeah. yeah. It's, it's uh, uh, Edison and Tesla or yes. Westinghouse. They've got their... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was it. Westinghouse. <laughs> Calling... Uh, Alternating what? current with the right. It was a cheaper it, version of direct. Current. I believe it was Edison that tried to get uh, when you put somebody in the electric chair that you were Westinghousing them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He didn't want direct current being yeah. used. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Interesting. Nice. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wanted credit for zapping somebody in the electric chair. No. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, that's the way it goes, I guess. Well, th- there is a famous quote from the first electrocution ever. Yes. Uh, it's from George Westinghouse, and they said he, he said, quote, they could have done better with an axe. Wow. I don't think it went too well. No, that doesn't sound yeah. like it went very well. I don't think he was too happy about his alternating <laughs> current. But it was cheaper, so maybe more, you know. Yeah. I don't know. But here we sit today, and it's, yeah, we sit, we yeah. sit, and and there are times where um, there are certain. And Eden Prairie, the city we're going to talk about, is getting on our list. Oh yeah, there's certain city councils that I think I'd rather take a shower and jump on an electric chair than listen to. And I think uh, after listening to this meeting on the Eden Prairie City Council, I think they are. On that, they're on that electric chair list. Oh boy! Of uh, I'd rather you know get hung by a yard arm <laughs> than listen to them talk anymore. And today, I mean, you know, Jay, I I have I have lived my entire adult life, uh, you know, so starting in the early to mid '90s to today, with um, watching a. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to call it a school shooting because that's really not the only time you hear this. But anytime there's some sort of mass murder, I'll just call it that, there is a cry for using that as the pretext to uh, erode our Second Amendment. Right. And I, I sit here to this day and wonder... How many, you and I have talked about this on the podcast before, so I I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, but it's important to get this. Why do we have a Second Amendment? No, 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 it's not for hunters. Target practice. It is not, 
even for defending yourself. That right. is kind of a misnomer. A little bit. It's a little bit about descending, defending yourself. But you think about the founding persons. Mm-hmm. I'll call it founding persons. How PC of you. That's nice. I know. It's rare that I'm going to be PC here. <laughs> um, what did the founding persons do against the British Empire? Put down a tyrannical government. They took up arms against a tyrannical government. Our founding persons understood that government can get out of control. It can go off the rails. It can go. uh, And so they, and I don't think it's a coincidence that this amendment is number two. Yeah. It was not at the end. It's at the beginning, right after freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to assemble, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an accident that this is number two. It is to take up arms against a tyrannical government. Mm-hmm. So the, the misconception of why we have this, why it's so important that we have this, yes, has been so lost. And I, I go back to, you remember the Brady Bill back in the 90s, which was the... Oh, how can I forget? Those were good times. Right. I mean, that, was, that introduced yeah. the waiting periods and, and yeah, all assault. that... A quote unquote assault right, rifle ban, yeah. Which most people don't know what an assault. If it looks scary, it's an mm-hmm. assault rifle. You know, your average handgun is a semi-automatic, right? You don't discharge the cartridge. And then a lot of people that don't know anything about guns whatsoever will take a scary-looking BB gun and call that an assault it rifle. Is, I mean, it, 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 it's ridiculous. There's really right. not a standard. It allowed Congress at their whim, basically, to ban a scary-looking weapon. Now, yeah. Let's think back, okay? When Lee Harvey Oswald shot JFK, nobody went on the nightly news that night and said, okay, where did he get his gun? Did he have a permit for it? Who sold it to them? You know, is that an assault rifle? Did blah, blah, blah. I mean, nobody even thought to do something like that. When Martin Luther King was gunned down by James Earl Ray, nobody checked into where he got the gun, who sold it, what state he bought it in. You know, was it licensed or registered? Right. No one cared. Uh huh. What happened between, say, the '60s and the '80s? Because the Brady Bill stemmed from the attempt on President Reagan. Right. Right. That was that was one of the things that triggered. I mean, it took a long time to do—ten years, yeah. or eleven years, or something like that. But I mean, what has happened in this country? Because I have one theory, and my theory is, and I'm, gonna, I'm interested to get your take on this before we get into Eden Prairie. Okay. I think what's happened is every time something happens, we try to explain the unexplainable. Mm-hmm. We try to, there is a reluctance to believe that evil exists, that bad people exist. That so- sociopaths exist. Mm-hmm. It's all oh, everybody's mentally ill, whatever the hell that means. Um, and there's always this thing to look to blame somebody, blame a school district, blame the gun, blame the the uh, parents, blame anybody but the person who actually did something. Yeah. You know, oh, if you would have seen this, well, what? The, you know, killers don't wear signs on their forehead. No. They never have. So is what has changed in society since the 50s, 60s, and 70s to today? What has led to this shift where any time there is, I mean, you can use the Parkland shooting, you can use Columbine, you can use Sandy Hook, you can pick your, pick your tragedy, let's call it that, pick your, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, the truth is you're, your kid has a better chance of getting run over walking to the mailbox than they do dying in a school shooting. If you want to be honest about it, that really is the truth. Right. <clears throat> but no kid should be shot at school. It should never happen. What, however, what has changed to where the first, the knee-jerk reaction? I was on social media the day of the Parkland shooting. Yeah. And there was not a peep about... The shooter, the victims, nobody cared. Mm-hmm. It was it was like when the bridge collapsed. I Okay, we're not taxed high enough. Where's that spending? Oh, you know, we're spending too much on the war on terror. It was, it was, it was to use it to further somebody's political gain. What has happened 
to make us do that? Well, I, I think that we care less about people and we care more about an image of caring about people, but <laughs> but it's usually for political gain or oftentimes it's to make us feel better about us because we're doing something. We're paying to have wells dug in Africa. We're doing this. We're doing that. And oftentimes, I mean, there are people, don't get me wrong, who are genuinely concerned with other people. Of course there are. Absolutely. And in, in fact, I would say that that is probably the majority but it's not the outspoken minority. The that, silent majority. Right. It's the group that feels like they have to talk about it are the ones that usually push it for political gain. And now it happens on the left and it happens on the right. Sure. I mean, there are, are those groups on on both sides of the spectrum, and it doesn't make it more right just because one you group does it over the that. other. But it happens. So the loudest people get the get the. A lot of times, I think social media exacerbates that a bit as well because it gives a platform to people who re- yelled at their TV twenty years ago. <laughs> you know, like me, <laughs> right? I still do that if yeah. you walk in on me during a Vikings game. Uh, but that, that, that I understand. Yeah. That's... <laughs> That'll make you old before your time. You yeah. look like you have emphysema if you watch them. Now, here's the thing, though. I, I, it just, it, it bothers me because, number one, so many people don't get the Second Amendment, why we have it, why it exists. Right. So many people who've never shot a gun couldn't name a gun. It's kind of like I complained about the DNR. A person who couldn't identify a walleye if I held it in front of them mm-hmm. is making rules about what I can and can't keep. Right. And we have the same thing with politicians. I can tell when I hear somebody talking who has shot a gun and who hasn't. Mm-hmm. I listen to Aaron Murphy talk. Oh, boy. And I'm like, this woman wouldn't know a gun if it landed on her face and started to wiggle. <laughs> okay? What is she doing make having any authority to do anything about this? I mean, she's being handed something mm-hmm. by her sugar daddies to go out to common sand skin. They're given uh, talking points right. to repeat over and over, and it's drilled into people's heads uh, that, you know, this, 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 and this until you hear it. It's like hearing, you know, instead of calling it uh, global warming, we'll call it climate change. Now everybody calls it that. Well, why? Because somebody made that up it sounds better Mm -hmm. and we're going to all start saying it and then everybody will start saying it abortion's not abortion anymore it's reproductive rights so we keep coming up with new terms it's not welfare it's assistance yeah you know so we keep trying to play little word games and the 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 misinformation the emotional reaction without thinking is where I really get scared. Yeah. Now, I listen, bring it home here, because, of course, we bring this to the local level. Of course, we are Community Solutions, so Solutions is our middle name. I guess Minnesota would be our last name, Community Solutions Minnesota. (laughs) But Solutions is very important. (laughs) And we've been talking week after week after week about about, uh, cities going outside of their charter, outside of... uh, the oath that they've been taken to deal with issues that have nothing to do with city government. And you're going to hear quotes from some of the dumbest people in office. (laughs) I I have seldom heard more ignorant. I can't even listen to it again. It was so bad. Yeah. I've seldom heard more ignorant, out of touch. Um, I can't even put words to describe it of what we are about to tell you is going on in Eden Prairie. I can't even fathom what their mayor is saying. Their mayor. N.C. Tyra Lucas. Yeah. The things she says are, I find them borderline offensive, and I find her lack of knowledge on this issue appalling. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know, Jay, if you want to play it, if we want to quote her. I'd rather not hear her voice again. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, Eden Prairie, Jay, why don't you explain wh- what this just happened on June 12th, okay? Yeah. Why don't you explain what they're proposing to do or did or 
Uh, okay. Give give the audience, and then I have plenty to say on that when you get done saying. <laughs> well, before we get into that, I mean, we've been talking for a while about the whole preemption battle. Preemption being where the state is guarding certain rights. And like you said before, there are local governments that are stepping outside of the power that's been given to them and deciding to do things that they don't have the right to decide. Now, does the state ever make bad laws? Yeah. They make a lot of them and and a lot of bad laws that affect local government. And it would be nice sometimes for a local government just to say, I'm not going to do that. But part of the, the negative end of that is this, where they decide, oh, we can implement a minimum wage. Oh, we can implement our own sales tax. Oh, we can, you know, we can restrict guns. They don't have the authority to do that. But they are trying to build a case at the local level to do that. We've talked about Deerfield, Illinois, mm-hmm. and and it's not the only place in, in the country, the only city in the country that has tried to either ban assault rifles, quote-unquote, or or put in some other type of gun control. But, Jay, is this, is this also a reaction to... <clears throat> you look at, at the country... Now, <clears throat> the Congress is not going to pass any gun measures no. as it stands. No, I won't. President Trump is not going to sign, and he's pretty much said, you know, he's right. kind of been a little bit inconsistent, but I'm <clears throat> I'm pretty certain he wouldn't do that. We have a legislature here that is not going to pass anything. Right. So is this a case of, okay, you're not going to do it, and you're not going to do it, and Mr. President, you're not going to do it, so guess what? We're going to do whatever the hell we want wherever we can. Yep. That's exactly what this is. So this is, this is, and let me tell you, I want to, because they're not banning assault rifles, but what they're doing, but they're doing is even worse. It's even sneakier. Yeah. I I mean, it's progressive 101. You, you start to change some things where you can in your direction and you over time build towards what you really want. Right. And I'm going to, I'm going to give a parallel to that when, when you go with your, with your, I got a brilliant okay. one. All right. I got a brilliant one, but I'm going to let you good, talk good, good, good. about what, so what, what Jay, what did they do? What, what happened at this meeting? Okay. Well, um, what happened, uh, the city attorney came and uh, had a couple different sets of, of resolutions that they were going to vote on. One was... It just magically came down from somewhere. Or you... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, remember, the city attorney, paid by the city, hired by the city, is there to make... They're not there to protect us. Mm-hmm. They're there to give the city... A legal rationale for whatever they're doing. Yes. They're there to protect the city. Right. Looking out for them, not yep. us. Now, look, not all city attorneys act like that, but they don't bite the hand that feeds them very often. Mm-hmm. So just to set that up, yep. the attorney is trying to figure out basically a legal way to do this. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and and what is the council going to go for? <laughs> um, so... It is at the council's direction, though, too. I should say yeah, that. Well, absolutely. And hey, I think we'll get into that. Hey, write up a too. law that mm-hmm. we can pass. And, and, and he says as much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he was asked to present this, and he he was asked to write up a couple of, of ordinances, and so he did. Uh, the first one takes gun stores and puts them together with pawn shops and adult use stores so that would be you know that motel that charges by the hour i don't know about that one <laughs> maybe maybe you know but that would be yeah anything that you know from from gentlemen's clubs to uh places that you sell adult goods to whatever um it, and so it, it 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 takes all three of these types of businesses puts them together in one category and says we are going to put a moratorium for 12 months okay jay jay yes. explain what a moratorium is to everybody i don't think everybody understands okay. that a moratorium Moratorium just it's means they're going to put a halt to something. So nobody is going to get a permit to do these businesses in the city for 12 months. To build new ones, new ones. or open new ones. Okay. So the existing ones will stay. And they had mentioned at this meeting that there's three gun shops or something, 
or they mostly sell sporting goods, right? Wasn't that uh, it? Right. So like Gander Mountain, uh, there's I think Dicks or somebody yep, like that. I think there's one that is not uh, <laughs> one's like part. Bill's Gun Range. Yeah, right? yeah, something like that. So, so really, so those three <laughs> things are all the same, right? And and they don't actually have any adult use stores, and they don't have any pawn shops. So. In my Second prairie. Amendment rights are now lumped in with pawnbrokers and stores that sell magazines with the pages stuck together. Great. You know, just, that's just wonderful. You know? <laughs> How ridiculous. Yeah, it, it is ridiculous. So they want to put a 12-month moratorium on these things, but it's it's by grouping all three of these together, they want to present the first and second readings of this and we've just described before some other times that an ordinance needs to go through a first reading and a second reading in order to become law mm-hmm. uh or i don't know about every ordinance but there's definitely certain ones that do yeah and i don't know if that's a law so much i know that that's what they do uh i know charter cities will probably have that spelled out a little bit better but um it is a, It is almost, I've never seen a first and second reading happen in the same meeting. And you and I have been watching these, these laborious meetings for how long now? Right. I mean, the, the most egregious thing I've seen before this meeting was the St. Louis Park consent agenda with the Tobacco 21. Yeah. And this is right up there with that, where they passed... They did have separate first and second readings for that, but they threw it in with a consent agenda and passed it in 23 seconds or whatever. This is right up there with that because they put the first and second readings together in one ordinance. In one fell swoop, you pass the first and second readings. So there's no time in between to have any discussion, no time for public Their input. Their decisions and they are made. And they weren't allowing public input yeah. at this meeting either. Well, what's up with that? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna say a reading of a of a law and nobody can come and speak on it. Yeah, that, that that's no public hearing and first and second together. It it, it it it's it's ridiculous. Now, how do they get away with zone? Now, is is zoning those three things together to make it easier to pass? I mean, I'm assuming that that if now first this is gonna pass. I mean. You can tell what what before yeah. we get into the comments that the council made, let's talk about what happened because we can get into their comments as yeah. we talk about what happened, but what happened? okay, so that was one set of ordinances. There was another set of ordinances because they knew that they were not going to get the unanimous votes that they needed. One that broke the gun shops off. So you would still have the adult use stores with the pawn shops and have that as a first and second reading with a 12-month moratorium. And the gun stores would, or firearm stores, whatever you want to call them, uh, they're still proposing a 12-month moratorium, but it would only be the first reading. So they would have to come back and do a second reading at another time. So that's what happened. Yes. So what happened was they unanimously passed the one about sex shops and pawn brokers. Yes, they did. Uh, well, when that was broken apart because there was one dissent there, right? There was one dissent uh, having all those together, yeah. So then the two passed, though, as separate motions. Yes, they, they both passed as separate motions. So, But the... The first reading of the uh, firearm shops and the 12 month moratorium was a four to one vote. Uh, Council member Brad Aho voted against it. Everyone else gladly voted for it. Everyone else wanted to keep all three of them together. So the only way that this really got delayed was Councilman Aho voting against it. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing that's going to bring this to another meeting in July. Right. So it could have pretty much all gone through. Yeah, and I'm sure in July it will pass four to one. one. Yeah. So that is what happened. Now, what's what's the motive behind a moratorium on new gun shops? I mean, they also went. This is the part that I don't get. Right. They went at length 
about how good their gun stores are, that there's they haven't had any problems there. But, so if there's no problems going on, what is the rationale behind having them? What do they need to study? If you've got three gun shops already in town, what study do you need to do? Well, uh, they want to look at the way that um, that firearm shops are zoned. Okay, well, what are they zoned now? They're in commercial? Uh, they're commercial, yeah. C1, C2, whatever I, that's defined as. I think they, as. Might, wanna, they want, might want to look at creating some sort of special classification, like with adult stores. You can't put them, right. you know, within X amount of feet of, you know, schools, daycares. Right, which but makes sense. sense. And churches oftentimes will get zoned away. Like I know uh, in Minneapolis, they're all downtown now. You can't put any of those outside of downtown. Right, you can't and, put right. uh, Deja Vu over by Lake Nicolbus. <laughs> which I, that part I get. But to me... Could they be saying, okay, we're not going to allow, is this the first step to not allowing them at all? Because I take it back to an issue like tobacco. Okay. We haven't outlawed tobacco. What we've done is made it illegal to smoke anywhere. Illegal to smoke in your car, illegal to smoke in a park, illegal to smoke in a restaurant, illegal to smoke in a bar. We've raised the taxes on them to where they're ten, twelve dollars a pack. We've we've made smoking as hard as you can make it, but we still allow it. Is that the goal here? That it's like the, the war on cars. We're gonna make it a pain in the arse for you to drive, but we're not gonna go physically go take your car away. Right. Is that what this is going is this a, is this a step? in saying we're going to limit we're going to not allow anymore no uh, this is to control though the number of retailers that they have so it's a way to let nobody else in right nobody else can sell right and then if somehow through attrition they get rid of the old ones you oh, know, a store closes. Right. You know they happen. It's yeah. cyclical, right? So this is this is the beginning of the choke. This is like uh, uh, I'm hanging you, but you still have your tippy toes. Yeah, you know. I mean, and just slowly the you know the hangman is yeah is that's where we're going because I can see something like this, which sounds so simple and innocent. Yeah, just going like a, a wildfire through other city councils. What do you want to bet within a month or two we're sitting here talking about another city taking... Oh, well, Eden Prairie uh-huh. decided to take them. So maybe we should look a, take a look at it. Yeah, and, and right now there are no other cities in the Twin Cities that have special zoning for firearm stores except for Richfield. Really? What's Richfield got? I don't know, but that, oh. they quoted that. And it's funny because Richfield just passed Tobacco 21 the other night. Well, wow, good for them. So, yeah. They're the 10th city now in Minnesota to drive all their businesses, uh, customers to the neighboring city. Yeah. So anybody, you know, 18, 19, they're driving down to Burnsville now to get their cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'd hope? I'd hope that everybody stops selling in that city. The city doesn't get any permit money. Yeah. But then again, they'll just raise the price of something else. I guess it probably won't work, but. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So, I mean, I want to get into some of the comments made oh because I, I had a good time. I, I, I shouldn't laugh, but like I said, I've never heard more ignorant people speak. Yeah. I'm Councilman Aho being a, a bit of an exception to that. But, I mean, Jay, the mayor... Was that the World Conference of Mayors? One of our, one of our uh, uh, U.S. conference. Of U.S. Mayors. One of yeah. our, one of our uh, side groups there. That, yeah. and they they have said and she made some ridiculous comments, just ridiculous. Now I want to get into what she said and what some of the other council people said. So, what did they say exactly? Well, um, let's start with uh, Council Member Kathy Nelson since she spoke first. She had a very confusing argument. (laughs) And it was that gun shops in the city are doing very well 
because and are happy with where they're at because the allow the places that they are allowed to be work very well for them. Okay. I well, good. I mean, how does she know how well they're doing? Is she got their balance sheets in front of her? I, <laughs> I don't know. She's talked to them apparently. Are the gun sales up at Eden Prairie? I don't. You know, I mean, interesting. I don't get that whatsoever. Yeah. How are they zoned now? I mean, uh, uh, as far as I know, I mean, it commercial whatever. Yeah, commercial okay. whatever. Yeah. You know, and and that's the I'm thing. I'm starting I mean, off very confused here. Well, that's the thing. I mean, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go sequentially. I'll, I'll stay sequentially. I will stay calm. Okay. Uh, so she made this argument that they're doing very well where they're at. And so, you know, there's no need to add any new ones because the, the spots that they picked work well for them. Uh, and and we want to make sure that they maintain a distance from schools and and daycares and churches. Okay, I've never seen a school next to a major commercial. Can you think of one? No. I mean, I, where's a school that's next to across the street from a mall or something? Um. Exactly. Yeah, I can't think of. One. I can't think of any either. <laughs> so I, <laughs> at least around here, I can't. District two eighty one, I can. I'm trying to think of the schools. Who's next to a mall? Closest one might be Cooper next to the uh, High V area, but that's yeah. a good mm, eight blocks or so, maybe. Yeah. Right. I don't see how it's relevant if they had a gun shop there. Um, I still don't see how. Yeah, I still. Yeah, it's daycares. People can run them out of their homes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know if there's a difference in zoning between a daycare center and a home daycare. Yeah, there, yeah, there is because yeah. that's still residential. You'd have to get a license to run something out of your home. But, you know, a business license. But, yes, right. I mean, uh, for daycare, there's a lot more because kids are involved. Right. But it's not like if there was a, you know, you're on the corner of whatever and whatever and there's a shopping mall behind you. Uh, mm-hmm. How do you regulate that? Yeah. If somebody wants to open up a home-based business, what are you going to do? Tell them, no, you can't make a living? Yeah. And I still don't see. I don't still don't see what somebody run a daycare out of their home, and a Bill's gun range being, you know, a block away well, is relevant. They I try s- to make this argument. They don't come out and say it so much, but it's like that. It's like that old Simpsons uh, episode where I have never watched the Simpsons. Homer once. goes in to buy a gun. You tell me, yeah. and 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 the guy says, uh, "Well, there, there's going to be a seven day waiting period on that." And he goes, "Oh, seven days, but I'm mad now." <laughs> <laughs> it, it's that argument that somebody's going to go in buy a gun, and then they're going to go right next to the daycare next door, the church next door, the school next door, and use the gun they just bought. Gun free it, zone. It's ridiculous. I, you know, it, yeah, you know, if you're planning a shooting, don't you have the gun and the ammunition like weeks in advance? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, not that I'm advocating that, but no, who no. goes, who wakes up one morning and says, "I think I'm gonna go buy a gun now and shoot something." And, I mean, and how many of them have walked straight from the gun store to wherever they're going? I, they probably have driven from their house. Yeah, most of them probably have a car. Maybe, maybe they can get by with public transportation. I, it, you can it, bring a gun. Gun on a bus, who gets padded down? It's like I said. You ride the bus, you find the most miserable people on earth. Okay, <laughs> it's the truth. All right, keep it's, keep going, keep going. All right, so I, I, it's ridiculous. So it, it's that argument, um, and it 
then went uh, over to Brad Aho, who says that it is it is offensive to put firearm stores into the same resolution as the pawn shops and the adult use shops. Um, he says he's not opposed to studying zoning for firearm sales, but it's offensive to put them into into the same. And he is against a moratorium. He doesn't think that there needs to be a moratorium in order to study the zoning. Makes sense. Yeah, I thought they study what they have. Right. So, yeah, that that's uh, that was the the bulk of what he said. Uh, then it went to Sherry. It took him ten minutes to say it. Yeah. But yes, yes, that is the that's the the boiled down <laughs> twenty version. second version. Uh, Sherry Butcher Wickstrom just <laughs> talked about <laughs> health and welfare, and and this is the picture that they're painting that because it is a city's duty to care, you know, for the health and welfare of their. Residents. Really, is that in their statutory law in the state? No, but according to them it is, because they can make a much more palatable case to restrict guns if based they make on up the health laws, and welfare. They go, yeah. yeah, you base it on health and welfare and not on the Second Amendment. We're not coming after the Second Amendment. We're coming after the health and welfare of our citizens. What did, they take, an, what did they take an oath to? Health and welfare of the United States Constitution. Yeah, that answers that question, doesn't it, Miss Butcher Davis Weimariner, whatever your name is? Uh, I mean, it, it, I, it, it's that is Butcher Wickstrom. I want to make sure that we get these names right because they need to be defeated in right, November. That's yes. true, and I, we should do that. I'll let you do the <laughs> names, but you know this the, the, that health and welfare. I mean. <laughs> That's totally unfair because I could make that argument about anything, couldn't I? Yeah. Yeah, really you could. Anything that you want to hey, regulate. Hey, we're not, we're not going to sell uh, uh, this kind of milk because of the health and welfare. We're not going to have any gambling because of the, even if it's legal to do, we're going to make it illegal because of health and welfare. We're going to ban driving and put sidewalks everywhere and, and exercise bikes on everybody's street corner for health and welfare. I mean, where do you take – there's no end to that. There's no end to that. how that can be – I scarcely use the term interpreted – Right, but you know you can interpret th- that's too broad of a term there to uh, have any meaning. Mm-hmm. Absurd, uh, ridiculous. Right. Uh, we have to go on, or yes, because this is very special territory we're getting into now. Okay, Ron Case. Um, of course, Ron Case, just like Sherry Butcher Wickstrom and Kathy Nelson, supports all three of these being in the same. Uh, this ordinance. guy talked. Incoherently. Oh, my word. Uh, again, you know, it's about the health and where- welfare. Um, there are are people in the community that um, have sensitivities. There are, are gun owners who have a visceral positive reaction to seeing... A big sign that says guns for sale on it. <laughs> oh, they, we just salivate. Let me tell you what. When oh. that comes... Oh, boy. When we, I see that big sign I wanna in the pull, distance... I want to pull over and do some jumping jacks and push-ups. It's so, it's so invigorating. <laughs> oh, my word. So we, we just salivate. And, and then there are those... He put the number at about 40 to 50% of the population that have a visceral negative reaction and are afraid when they see big signs that say guns. 40 to 50%. <laughs> they're really scared. Yeah, they're really scared. And, you know, we have to make sure that we put a moratorium on to ha- handle rezoning because who wants... You know, if you're scared of guns and have a visceral reaction, what if there, somebody wanted to put a gun shop 100 feet from your home? 100 feet from your home? That would be like next door. Who's zoned for that? That's ridiculous. Who? who? He's making things up as he goes. Yeah. And he knows he is. I mean, if you've got, if you've got a gun store in the middle of a strip mall, that's... Nowhere near somebody's home. Even yeah. the people behind it, it's it's you know, or close to it. I mean, basically, what she's saying is he doesn't want a gun store anywhere. 
I mean, that's <clears throat> he's not coming out and saying that, but that's kind of what he is saying. I'd kind of feel safe if there was a gun store close. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think that that's a reasonable argument, though. Again, no. I go back to I don't get it. I don't get the, this reaction when I see a billboard. I mean, billboards are... Uh, <laughs> I can't even tell you. I drive 169 every day, and I can't even tell you what's out there. But I'm not pulling over going, yeah, there's that gun one. I know. Take that. <laughs> I mean, what? Jeez. And he's driving by, I guess he's wet in his pants every time he sees it. Yeah, piddle, and I'd like to piddles know, wh- like a little puppy. Yeah, where is it? Where I- are these big signs of I don't see them anywhere, huh? No. I- I'd like some visual proof at Eden Prairie that those exist. Oh, I think don't. he's full of manure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it's crazy town. I, and then, you know, we look to the mayor to bring a little clarity and common sense. Who, and boy, we sure get none. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Nancy Tyra Lukens, also uh, up for reelection. NTL, this year. baby. NTL. Yeah, that's our new nickname, Mayor NTL. <laughs> she also supports all three. Um, it's all about health and welfare, and um, she she mentioned somebody uh, in the city who happened to be in Las Vegas when that shooting happened, and how somebody might be, you know, that person might be scared of when cars are backfiring. Like that has anything to do with gun shops? Uh, cars you know, backfired happens. Right. Yeah. And and how she went to this U.S. conference of mayors. Uh, they had David Hogg uh, from Parkland and some right. other students who came and spoke uh, to this quote unquote nonpartisan group. Right, uh, all about all these great liberal policies, yep. including gun control. And um, she talked about how the children at Parkland don't feel safe. And she says, I don't think our children feel safe. Oh, really? In Eden Prairie. She's taking yes. a poll at the latest school? Or I what? think she's just guessing, yeah. Um, says something needs to be done. It needs to start with the community because the state and federal government will not do anything. And it is the responsibility of our council to help people be safe. So... People are not safe in Eden Prairie. Is that uh, so? So, uh, should they take some responsibility for the fact that people don't feel safe in the city that they're in charge of? Whose fault is that? I I don't know. I love how the I mean the mayor's comments um, prove what we've been saying here all along. She's pissed off that she can't get the laws. Her common sense crap. She made comments about the NRA, too, that I find rather offensive. Um, Because everybody points to the NRA like they're the only people on the face of the earth that care about the Second Amendment. I have to say, without them, I will say without them, uh, I think gun ownership would be run over on a larger scale. But... uh, the NRA doesn't speak for everybody who owns a gun. I mean, I've owned a gun, and I'm not a member of the NRA. Right. And I, I don't understand how they're always the people who get blamed. The NRA just can say and do nothing, and they get blamed. But she points out something on their website where, and I believe this is true, that the goal mm-hmm. is a repeal of the Second Amendment. The NRA is right. They're not right about how it's going to happen. It's going to happen incrementally slowly over time to where the people who are alive don't know what gun rights are and that's why they the nra steps in and opposes this stuff because they know they've seen it happen with health care we've seen it happen with tobacco we've seen it happen where your rights get incrementally taken from you including your negative rights which aren't talked about enough right you know you've got the right to be a moron you've got the right to do something to yourself as long as it doesn't interfere with somebody else's persons or property. It's called freedom. Yeah, it is. And so when this gets stepped in, they know that incrementally this is how this is going to go down. It's going to go down um, by slowly over time taking these things away. And it's just like what's happened with tobacco. They're going to put a moratorium on this. My guess is somehow they come out to make this permanently. 
And slowly over time, nobody's going to sell a gun in that town. Now, first off, just because you can't buy one in Eden Prairie, it doesn't mean that your schools can't get... <laughs> how, about you, right. how about you lobby to have schools not be gun-free zones? I mean, they're sitting ducks yeah, for whoever. Absolutely they are. I mean, you want to feel safe. I mean, why don't you do something like that? Yeah. Where's your lobbying power? Where's the the uh, Covenant of Mayors or the U.S. Conference on Mayors? Where are they on that? I mean, you've, yeah. you've basically made it so schools are 110% unarmed. you got some 60-year-old grandmother there acting as some sort of security mm-hmm. <laughs> that a, a 12-year-old could beat the hell out of. And that is, that's the security you have in the building. Now, look, I don't want people to go to school in prisons. I don't want people with machine guns standing at the door. I don't know what the happy medium is. What I think is that schools need to decide that for themselves. Yeah. I think that's what has to happen. Some schools will and some schools won't. It's Again, that's freedom, ain't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Sorry. That's fine. You can use ain't on this program. But, but what this mayor says yes. is, is literally takes, it's almost like she's plagiarized this program. That this is going to be a fireball everywhere. That these cities are going to come in and they are going to do crap like this. They're going to do it step by step to strip away any rights we have left. Yes. And it is disgusting. This mayor's comments are ignorant. They are... I I can't even... I I don't even want to come up with enough adjectives. I just... I don't want to listen to her. I can't look at her speak. (laughs) Okay? This entire council outside of... Mr. Aho, who, you know, I, I, I agreed about 75% of what he said. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know how people aren't outraged at this. I mean, yeah. forget your view for a minute on guns or whether you own one or not. I mean, this is so naked what they're trying to do here. It's, 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 yeah. I'm at the boiling point with right. cities around here, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I am too. I mean, just for those of you that, that are interested, maybe, maybe you're, better than new hope out there in eden prairie and you can (laughs) you can gather three people that want to run for office i mean you've got your mayor nancy tyra lukens up for re-election this year kathy nelson up for re-election this year sherry butcher wickstrom up for re-election this year (laughs) you can get rid of three people that take a very strong anti-gun stance and and you can get rid of them in this election cycle so come on eden prairie where are you we know there's activists in that city it's time for you to stop being silent it just really is Mm -hmm. it's now or never they're not gonna rescind and move backwards are you kidding me this is a done deal i I mean look look come there in july let them know what you think but from what i heard you don't have an open-minded city council that's interested in problem solving. They want a grandstand. They want to be the city that does this. They want to quote take the lead on this. As some yes. of them mentioned. So this is their minds are made up. Absolutely. So they are. the only way you're going to change things there is to get their arses out of office. Yeah, I mean this isn't the first time either. I mean there was talk about banning assault wipe- weapons before uh, in Eden Prairie. They decided not to do they it. They can't do it. They don't yeah. have the legal authority and, to make up, and they know that. Yeah. You know, so they, they said so. However, opinions change over time, or they can do an end run around it. Right. So, no. so this is where they start. This is because uh, let me tell you, you've got your uh, U.S. Conference of Mayors. You've got the National League of Cities, which is behind this, yeah. uh, which by proxy, then the Minnesota League of City or League of Minnesota Cities is behind this as well. Uh, and what they're a not shock. the only groups. Yeah, what a shock! Yeah, that they're behind. Yeah, all these nonpartisan groups taking these super radical approaches to things like, like climate change, to things like uh, rate uh, choice voting, tobacco yeah. twenty one, minimum oh, wage. Right. You just you name it, uh, bike lanes, whatever. I mean, you name the groups. We've talked about them a million times. They're not going anywhere, folks. No, coming if they haven't been at your city, they're they're on the way. Yeah, I, it's as simple as that. Absolutely. And they will they will get their fingers in wherever they can. And once they get a foothold, that's all they need. And here's the other thing. Yeah. Sometimes they get beaten back, but 
but then they come back. Yes. What did we talk about at Golden Valley with organized garbage hauling? Or maybe it was New Hope. Yeah. Well, we don't have the consensus mm-hmm. yet. Right. We're not there yet. In other words, we haven't sold it well enough yet. Oh, We're yeah. coming back for it. In right. two years or three years or four years. And we'll have a better sales pitch. Yep. <clears throat> you know. Well, there was an article that I tweeted today. Um, and I, I think this was Seattle. It took them 20 years of community engagement to... It, it says, 20 years of community engagement set to pay off as ground breaks on Capitol Hill Stanton's transit-oriented development. So they don't give up. Hmm. Took twenty years, but for them it was well worth it because they just they just sat back and they continued to work on it until they could figure out a way to sell it to the public. Or if they couldn't sell it, at or least they found a, a way counsel, to get it in. Or get a council that would agree with them yeah. or get a resolution that could pass or an ordinance that would pass or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> That's pretty much what it took. So I mean your cities are <coughs> Folks, I guarantee you they're taking this crap up. I mean, it's just no doubt about it. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's just such a violation of everything that they were elected to do. Eden Prairie City Council ought to be ashamed of themselves. They sh- they're not. Of course not. They're arrogant. They're ignorant. They're, every adjective you can put on them is what they are. And we, let me tell you something, Eden Prairie. You're on my poop list. Right by St. Louis Park. You don't think we're going to be watching and reporting on everything you do from now on? Mayor NTL, you're on our poop list, too. Yes. And anything you say in public, anything you do, I am telling you, we are going to be all over like a fly on dog crap. <laughs> all right? I know. I'm Look, I'm going off the handle tonight, but, you know, I'm sick and tired of this. And it, it, there's nothing wrong. I'm not angry. I'm passionate. That's Yeah. You know, it's, it's you passionate. I wish more people were. But, I mean, I, I want to parachute into this meeting and, you know, show them what gun laws are really all about here. <laughs> you, know, just, well, you better clarify that yeah. statement. <laughs> parachute in and uh, give my opinion at the next meeting. That's, that's a better. Because you made that. it sound like you were going to pull a John <laughs> Rambo. And... <laughs> no, no, no. I, okay. No, I ain't going to do that. Good. But it's, Thank you. But I, it's... Uh, I can't do this alone. So. No kidding. That's right. You can't. I, I mean, you're the anchor there. and I'm the star. We've got our we've got our roles on this on this program. But boy, I just don't put it past me to show up at this meeting whenever it is. I mean, I just because it doesn't matter if you're not an Eden Prairie resident. It, it's coming to you. I mean, mm-hmm. with Tobacco Twenty One passed, did I think Plymouth was going to be next on the list? Pretty no. soon they were before I knew it. Yeah. And I what? So, they're yeah. crazy. So, I don't think, folks, either that this only happens in Minneapolis or Seattle or some nutcase town run by a bunch of whack jobs. Uh, th- this can happen anywhere. Yeah. And once one city does it and another city does it and another city does it, all of a sudden it's not so radical anymore. That gives those city councils cover. Hey. Richfield, Edina, St. Louis Park, whoever ever is doing Tobacco 21, well, maybe we should too. Yeah. That's pretty much will be the argument that's taken up. Yeah. So, I'm speechless. Finally? Finally. No. <laughs> Doesn't happen often. I tell you, it, it, it's amazing. And, and like we said, this is the first step out of many. So... Eden Prairie, you are the bellwether. You are... Aren't the, you proud, Eden Prairie, of the people you elected? Yeah. Fine fine folks. Fine folks. They may be fine folks, but <clears throat> at least four of them don't belong where they are. No. No, they don't. They should be... So, Eden Prairie, let me tell you something. No more sitting around yelling at the TV. We appreciate you listening to this program, but there's no more of this. That You, you cannot sit and wait anymore if these people get another four years if these people have a majority what do you want to bet tobacco 21 minimum wage ranked choice voting southwest light rail what is going to happen if these folks get four more years yeah you can't stop it no no you can't and um you know now is the time i mean it, it it really is and 
you guys have a choice to make. You know, what kind of city do you want to live in? Yeah, do you want your city on the news every... You want us talking about a? You want us to give you the new hope treatment? <laughs> the the no hope city, yes. no hope. There is no hope there. Yeah, zero. <laughs> you guys, All right, have I flown have off? Have I flown off the handle enough for one show? Probably. Yeah. You guys have a choice and you have a chance. The. The filing period starts at the end of July and goes through the beginning of August. So you guys need to think this out well. Jay, are those right at-large seats, the council seats? I just, they are. Okay. I so it's two, think. it's basically three at-large elections, if you really think about it. Yes. Yep. They are at-large. And, uh, yeah, basically three at-large elections. So, uh that works. Get your walking shoes on. Mm-hmm. But that's all right. I mean, what's it worth to you, you know? That's right. And you bring us down there, Yeah, and we'll help you out. Jay, how do you get a hold of us? C-O-M-M, SolutionsMN at gmail.com. You find us on Twitter at? C-O-M-M, SolutionsMN. <laughs> Our email is c o m m solutions m n at gmail dot com. <laughs> All right, it, it, that's how you find us. So it, it, make it happen. To look us up. Uh, follow us on on social media. It, share these podcasts everywhere. If you hear about any stupid stuff happening in your city, or they're talking about, and if you're not finding stupid stuff, you're not looking hard enough. That's right. You know. Uh, Help us help you. That's the bottom line. Uh, we can only do so much. We can't. Right. It's like yeah. the Beatles said, help. We need somebody. Help. Right? Yeah. Isn't that how it goes? That's, that's pretty close. That's help. Good. We're in the yellow submarine. I mean, come on. <laughs> we've got, we've got, you got to talk to us, folks. Yeah. Help, 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 help. And many of you do. And we've had people reach out from all over the state Want. Wanting help this election season, we still have some capacity available. It's not too late, but I tell you, once you, we get into late summer, we're getting into that point where it's too late to start. So we need to yeah. start putting a plan together now. Get a hold of us, and 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 we will help you the best way that we know how. So. We're going to continue to do these podcasts. We're going to continue to blog. We're going to continue to throw these stuff out there. On and I just um, thought yeah. of something else. Yeah. We're like the Beatles too. We work eight days a week. We do. We do. See, look at all these songs I know. That's good. You could sing us the whole Beatles catalog, maybe on one of these podcasts. I don't so, know. I uh, maybe. Maybe you'll fall off somewhere around Rubber Soul. Maybe. I yeah. mean. Um, the, the, you know, when you're on the spot sometimes, it's like I can name 50 yeah. Beatles songs, but right now I can only think of like two. So that's... <laughs> so, oh, <yeah>. oh, boy. <laughs> and with that... We'll, we'll go through the election and we'll hold your hand. Oh, <laughs> I am putting... The- Put the kibosh on this show. I have put in a moratorium. Put it in the can. In the can. Put the show in the can. 12 months moratorium, first and second reading done. (laughs) Uh, I voted. I'm going to vote for it, too. (laughs) I second that. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. It's getting late, apparently. It is late. Oh, boy. All right, Minnesota. We're going to continue giving you good stuff. (laughs) Reach out to us because we've done our part. But now it's all up to you. And we, we love you, Minnesota. talk about a revolution. Will you let me close this know? stupid podcast? My gosh. We love you, Minnesota. Now it's your turn to get to work.
you call.